Hey guys, what's up? I'm out here this afternoon. I was actually in the middle of working and decided to go grab the camera and show you what I was doing. I've made videos detailing this in depth in the past about how I plant tomatoes. But if you somehow miss these, I will show you again. Um, I'm out here planting some transplants. I got these from my friend, Farah. As you know, if you've been watching with me and many of my seedlings were stunted, I'm still planning on planting them. I have three long beds that I'm gonna do of tomatoes. But since I was able to get some starts from friends and at a local store that had some heirloom starts, um, I went ahead and got some. So the sooner you get stuff planted, the sooner you harvest it. And here I have a Dr. Witchie's, my absolute favorite tomato, big yellow slicer. Um, and I'm gonna plant it, show you guys. This starts a little dry, so um, it's looking a little droopy, but that's okay, I'm gonna water it in. I'm taking off the bottom branches. I'll leave the top ones in place, as you can see here. And I'm gonna dig a really deep hole. It's super bright out here, so I hope you guys can see. Um, I'm gonna dig a really deep hole here. Oh, weeds. All right, so the thing that I do when I'm planting tomatoes, <laughs> it's wild, like you share with people the thing that you do. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm not saying this is the only way. An old man told me once to put an egg in the hole under your tomatoes. I do crack the egg. Of course, I have a lot of eggs because I have a lot of chickens. I understand egg prices being what they are. This might not be something people want to do. It's okay. I'm not saying you have to. I dig a deep hole. I throw an egg in the bottom of it. Crack the egg. And then I put my tomato plants in. Uh, if you lay your plants down sideways, this one was laid down, they will start pointing upwards within about two days. Um, I usually do mine in a little bit of an incline like this, as you can see. Now this year, now I don't always do this, sometimes I just push this soil back over the top. This year, just as a means of amendment, I'm actually topping my plants off, like when I dig a hole like this, with some fresh uh, potting soil. This has some nutrients in it. Um, this is one way to amend. It's essentially top dressing your plants with some nutrients. I'm actually going to go ahead and take that branch off as well. So as you can see, just the very tip top of this plant is sticking out. Now one thing I like to do is kind of mound the soil up around my plants. So there's kind of a moat around them so that when I water these, the water will run down away from the plant itself. But you remember, I kind of planted this at an angle. So the roots are actually right down under there. So by doing the moat, it's going to go down to the roots and it's actually going to encourage this plant to put roots out a little further away from the main stem. Yeah, that's how I plant tomatoes. The egg thing. <laughs> Man, like people get really uh, up in arms about that. A lot of people are like, tomatoes don't eat eggs. And I'm like, well, no, but worms do. Um, I really just think it's a shot of nitrogen. The shell does take more than one season to break down. So it's really not the shell. Though as it breaks down, that will add calcium to the soil, but it's not, I don't think that's actually what does it. I, I have had a lot of people over my years of sharing that tip do side-by-side -side comparisons and tag me in photos and show that their tomato plants with the egg in the hole did perform better. Um, at least they got bigger. I don't know if people have weighed out what the plants actually produced. I think my, my opinion is it's just that egg is just a shot of nitrogen, which is going to help quick growth. Um, if nothing else, it feeds the microbes in the soil. It feeds the worms, which is a good thing. There is a risk if you are planting tomatoes with an egg in the hole, if you have any sort of critters or varmints or anything like that, that they might come dig it up. Um, one solution to that would be to put some lime over it. I planted several tomato plants last week with eggs in the hole and uh, so far nothing's dug them up. Of course, I have guardian dogs and stuff that run around here, so we don't really deal with a lot of varmints in our garden anyway with all the cats and dogs we have. That is something to be mindful of. I think it really helps to bury them really deep, which planting tomatoes really deep helps the tomatoes, so um, I don't know. It's just what I do. 
do you have to do it no but I am telling you what to do because it's kind of like my job so I'm actually finishing up planting out this row of tomatoes with the plants that I got from Farah um, I've got like Dr. Witchy's here I got some giant crimson brandy wines um, I had gotten some plants at the store. I did a few hybrids over here, but mostly heirlooms. This whole row here is cherry tomatoes. I've got like super sweet 100s and sun golds and a couple others. Uh, and then down here, the wild boar farms ones, which actually Farah actually had some of my favorite wild boar farms. I put some of mine in, but look how little they are. So we, um, I just wanted to see if they'd grow faster out here than in the greenhouse, but then Farrah gave me some. So this is a blue wild boar blueberries, and so is that, so. Um, yeah, she gave me Berries Crazy Cherry as well. So I've got my wild boar farms here, and then down here I have the heirloom varieties that I purchased. So this is like a lot of Cherokee purples, mortgage lifters, Rutgers, German pink, German Johnson, brandy wine, black brandy wine, all down here. And then over in the three long tomato beds that I'm doing over that way, I'm doing all of my starts. So I'll be harvesting tomatoes out of this space first, and then I'll start harvesting, because these are just ahead of those. They're bigger plants, so they'll produce sooner. And that'll be nice. Um, the only thing is, tomatoes start dropping their blossoms when it's like, really over 90 Fahrenheit 32 Celsius people say over 85 but like 90 is when I consistently see most tomatoes dropping their blossoms and that's gonna be like June here so I may end up figuring out how to rig up some shade cloth over those tomato beds because they're gonna be like peaking when it's too hot for them to produce and that's kind of the trouble here but I'm still gonna plant them so all of so I should have tomatoes sooner and if I can work it out with my stunted seedlings which are growing well now um, down there I'll have also tomatoes later and I like that I like tomatoes all the time so yeah I'm gonna finish planting this I'll catch up with you guys on the other side All right, finishing that out means I have these three rows filled with tomatoes. So one thing that I like to do, and I mentioned this row right here is my cherry tomatoes right here, closest to my pavilion. It is really important to me to cultivate living spaces in the garden. I guess that's something of my garden philosophy that it should be a place where you actually spend significant times of your life rather than just working. Because I feel like that kind of makes insurance against you when july and august run around and it's really hot and you're tired of pulling weeds you're tired of working in the garden you're tired of the toil of the garden i feel like if you have created spaces that you are drinking your coffee that you're sharing meals with your friends that you're hosting people you're gonna end up doing the work because if you just come down to have your coffee you know the next thing you know you're pulling some weeds you're tying things up um i call it piddling you know you're piddling around the garden you're getting stuff done and with that thought in mind of wanting to create living spaces, I am very intentional to put the snacky varieties that I'm growing near my spaces where I'm creating living spaces. So I have my pavilion here, my sitting. Obviously, if you have a really small garden, this probably doesn't make a massive difference. But even still, like if you're going to have a handful of raised beds, if you have your little seating area, put your cherry tomatoes right by it. Put the things that you're going to just sit there that you can reach over and pull one off and pop in your mouth and just enjoy the fruits of your labor. And that's why this row is right here. Specifically, I wanted the cherry tomatoes right here beside the seating area. Those are also snacking peppers. I wanted them right here because I want to be able to enjoy the garden. It's getting kind of windy because we have a storm blowing in. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually the middle of the afternoon. Um, it looks kind of evening-y out here because it's supposed to rain all afternoon, which is why I'm trying to get stuff planted. Uh, but check out the pavilion. Our friend Jesse, we hired him to come finish out the pavilion uh, to do all of this finish work. And it looks so pretty. I just love it. I think Maya and I were talking about potentially getting some stain and 
us coming out and rolling it on later this week. Um, and then I can finish hanging everything up, get my pots all up here. I can take a little break here and chat with you guys now that I'm finished. I finished what I was trying to do. Uh, Maya and I went away last night just for one night. We went to downtown Columbia and spent the night down there celebrating our wedding anniversary, which was yesterday, which was very sweet. It's funny, I woke up in a hotel room this morning and by about 7.30, I'm just like antsy as all get out. Jeremiah rolls over, he said, you just do not have it in you to sleep in. <laughs> I was like, if only I had a garden. <laughs> he was like, you're missing the point. So I ended up getting a book out and reading so that I could have a leisurely morning. But he literally stopped in the driveway when we got home and said, do you want to get out here? Because he knows that I miss the garden. <laughs> we had a wonderful time. We really enjoyed each other's company, enjoyed some good food and celebrated. 12 years of being married, which is really sweet. So I did a video just a few days ago showing you guys my chamomile harvest. And look at this, look at how many are open now just in that short period of time. I told you, the more you harvest them, the more you get. Now, normally some of my stuff that I planted out here, I planted some annuals, some different zinnias and different things. Um, they're looking a little crusty and they could probably use some water. I'm not going to set the sprinkler up on them though because we have like 80% coverage for the rest of the evening once this storm comes in so I don't have to water them. All right, let's come in here real quick. Take a look at this. This is massive difference in my seedlings. Just in like, what, a week and a half or so. Giving them a little bit of fertilizer. I think it was definitely dealing with a soil deficiency also coupled with having uh, the shade cloth on which definitely was a damaging thing for them. Um, yeah, everything's looking great. Also, I want to point out something. Um, look at this. Look, aren't these beautiful? These are called gamecock. They're like water irises. We put them around the fountain because they like water. <laughs> so, I was worried they might be a little too tall, but I actually really like how they look around the fountain. I think once all of this is all like filled up and wild, it's gonna look really good. The storm is blowing in. Feels so good. So today I went into the local tractor supply and found clearance plants for $1. So obviously they got some crusty leaves on them. Uh, we'll see. There is a risk here that they might not come back, but I'm going to put them all in some pots. Um, I got three blackberry variety, or three blackberry bushes are all the same blackberry variety, and three blueberry, and they are these bushel and berry um, varieties that like being in pots. So I am quick to buy things that are perennial that I can save from the brink of death. So I call this plant rehab. I used to joke that my mother had a plant rehab and I had a plant hospice because anytime I would buy the plants that were like on the clearance rack, they would just come to my house to die. But um, I've gotten better, I've grown. <laughs> so like, now I feel pretty confident that I'm offering plant rehab as well. So I'm gonna put all of these in pots um, and see if I can bring them back. I don't expect to harvest anything this year, but if I could potentially harvest something next year, that'd be awesome. And if I fail, I lose $6, which is a gamble that I'm willing to take. Wow, look at this. I know I'm all over the place, but it is kind of one of those afternoons. My um, strawberry lemonade, Baptisia, just exploded in the last two days since I was gone. I wasn't even gone full two days. I just left yesterday morning. It's beautiful. All right, let me appeal to the fellow millennial kids out there. Um, does anybody else have the feeling when you're in your garden and it either one gets too dark for you to see or two, a thunderstorm is rolling in. Like right now, I just heard thunder, which means I need to go inside. Do you have that same feeling you had when you were a kid and the street lights came on and you were like, oh man, <laughs> I'm out of time. <laughs> That's totally how I feel right now. I heard the thunder and I had that like, oh man feeling. Cause I just want to go stay out here and plan all the things. I knew my time was limited, but I had to take it where I could get it. I'm going to go inside before it starts storming, but Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.